Um, Heather, can you help me out with something? I'm going to be in Africa for the voters meeting, so it would be great if we could make a video talking about all the great things that are happening at Emmanuel Lutheran Church and School. What do you think? I'll help you, but you gotta lose the hat. As we come to the end of another fiscal year, it is really great for us to look back at all of the blessings that God has given our church and our school this year, and to look forward to the ways in which we can anticipate blessing others uh, over this year. And you know what, It's it's been a rough few years it's been a challenging time in a lot of ways, but it's also been a time when our church and our school has really stepped up to make a difference. And we've seen that this year, and we anticipate more of that going forward. And one thing that really strikes me about our world today is how anxious we are and how troubled things have become around us and how important it is for our church and our school to play an important role in our lives and in, our, in the life of our community. Heather, I really see that so much in our church ministry, but so much also in our school ministry. Absolutely, absolutely. We are here to be different in this world, even as a school. And when I think about this school year and all the things that happen, I can't help but be a little selfish and go back to the moment at my installation. Mm -hmm. Because last August, I didn't expect to be being installed in May, but it was a powerful experience as a person and as a Christ follower and as part of this community. And the thing that strikes me when I think about that day is going back to the end of my installation where pastor invited everyone up to lay hands. and. Who does that when they're starting a new job? Who gets to stand there and have people that have influenced their 20 some years of ministry come before you and lay hands on you? And my family was there, my cooperating teacher from student teaching, people I've taught with for all of this time. But it was a striking moment to me of how being called here is something so different than what happens with my public school friends down the street that are in education. And not only those prayers for that day, but those prayers that, that was a promise. Those people were praying, they were promising to pray for me, not only in that moment, but in the days ahead. And not just for me, but for our ministry, for our leadership, for our teachers, our school, our families. It was so incredibly powerful. And that's how we do life together. It's by praying for each other, by supporting each other in ways that are so different from what the world does. Yeah, you don't find this anywhere else. And our world desperately needs it. Over this last year as we've come out of COVID, our church has really worked hard to reestablish ministry, but also to reconnect. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, how we've been do, able to do that over the last year, but also how we're looking forward uh, to uh, the coming year. Over this last year, we welcomed so many of you back into worship in person. It's been so great to spend that time together for things like Christmas and Easter, and just every Sunday, getting together and spending that time singing our songs and praising God. It's such an important part of our life together. In the fall, we did something really unique. We looked at the Jewish lectionary and how Jesus would have read the book of Genesis. It was fabulous. Over this last year, I got to teach something near and dear to my heart, which is the Harvest Incubator for Mission. And I watched as we grew together in our love for God and our love for each other. We were able to reconnect with each other with more gatherings, with a beautiful church picnic and with our Advent together and Lent together meals. We look forward to doing that more in the coming year. You know, one of the things that COVID taught us is how important it is for us to be together. As we were reconnecting in various ways, 
a group of people in our congregation came together and said, well, let's make sure that we are ready for the next Emmanuel party. We've got party planners. We've got people who want to get us together and throw a great party and how important it is for us to spend that time together. We were so blessed this year to receive a $100,000 gift against our loan and a challenge to double that. We called it lighten the load. Wouldn't you know it? This congregation stepped up and tripled the gift. What an amazing, amazing thing that God did through our congregation, not just for ourselves, but for generations to come at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. We are committed to the next generation, and Pastor Stinky is building something really special with our youth ministry. We just confirmed 15 young people into the faith. Our junior and senior high youth group is growing and we get to send these young people to the National Youth Gathering this summer. And I know there are so many more plans for the future, including trips to Belize. I'm so excited for what uh, we're able to see as we're raising up that next generation of believers and church workers through our church. And I am just so excited that finally we get to send a team back to Liberia West Africa. Judy's hard at work here because they're just leaving in a few days. They get to train teachers again and help them with those sewing projects that are so important. And I'm super excited also because my wife Ruth and I, we get to go to Tanzania in East Africa to train pastors and their spouses in leadership, much like we did before in Liberia. What an awesome international impact our congregation gets to have. Uh, say hi, Judy. Hi, pray for us, we leave on Monday. One of the greatest blessings I have at Emmanuel is the people that I serve with. Not only the leadership team here at Emmanuel, but our teachers and our aides that make the magic happen every day. They are the hardest working people I know. They work so hard that many days they come in way before their students, they spend all day with the students until the kiddos go home, and finally they leave maybe five or six o'clock at night. Our teachers actually don't have the things that a lot of teachers get, like prep periods or even lunch away from their students. And so by expanding our programming and bringing in more staff, we're gonna create a better balance for our teachers so that they can continue to shine and we are not doing everything at their expense. So we're excited to be offering those opportunities for a little break during the day for our teachers. Our teachers this spring, we spent a day just visioning about our school. What do we want it to look like? What are our strengths and where do we want to grow and shine? And the list they came up with was so incredible. We put all those ideas together, similar to what church did during the visioning and questioning process. And we listed all those things out and grouped them together. And from that, the teachers created with our help covenant statements for our school. So this is just a quick printout of it. I love how it's designed. We have statements for the staff, statements for our, our families, our parents, and for our students. They're all centered on Christ. They're what we want to see happening every day in our school. And then what do we each need to do to make those things happen? For example, all, start, all of them start with treat others as I would like to be treated. That's what we want in this world, and that's what we expect at our school. It talks about our teachers being in church and Bible study so that we can be the spiritual leaders in the school, how we pray for each other, lots of things that we'd want to see. And as you notice, there are more for the teachers and staff than for anyone else because that's what we expect. We hold ourselves to a high standard so that we can teach at our best. We can lead at our best and we can be those spiritual leaders for our families and our students. So we're so excited to bring this to Emmanuel this year as we look towards our future. 
We are now in our science lab. It's quiet right now, but it won't be this fall. We are so blessed to be welcoming Deb Kohler. We extended a call to her this spring and she accepted that and she is coming to serve as our math and science teacher for our middle school. We're so excited about her hands-on approach to science. She visited and in just one afternoon, the kids were buzzing on the way out of school, talking about all the great things she's going to do with them. Deb is going to be improving and expanding our science program, bringing the NGSS standards to our classroom, focused on science and engineering, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts throughout our middle school program. We're so excited about this opportunity for our students. We are now in what many of us call the music room, but this is a place where change is happening this summer. We are also so excited to be bringing on board Emily Meyer, but we won't call her that by August because she's getting married this summer, but our new art teacher. Emily is so excited to expand our art program and give our kids really great opportunities to implement art across the curriculum. And I'm especially excited about her love for her faith and how she plans to incorporate religion and faith concepts into art every day with our kiddos. We're so excited to watch the transformation happen as this goes from a music room to an incredible art room. Well, now we're in our early childhood center. You might even hear some noise behind us. Even though we're two weeks into the summer, we are still here. The early childhood teachers are teaching throughout the summer in our summer program. Actually, we had a group of them here yesterday working on developing our curriculum on a deeper level because that's just who they are and what they do. We have an incredible team here. But as we continue to invest in our big kids by bringing on a science and math teacher and an art teacher, we continue to invest in our early childhood program, which is bursting. We can't even fit in this area of the school anymore. And we're so excited to be adding another full-time classroom to our programs next year because this community needs that and we want to meet the needs of our community. So we're excited to welcome a whole bunch of new kids and their families this coming school year. As we look to the future, it's important for us to have a sense of where God is leading our congregation. That's why we gathered the congregation for some listening sessions. We called it the road ahead. It was a chance for us to listen to one another, to pray with one another, and to truly seek God's will for the future of our congregation. What came out of that are seven visionary values that we've preached through during the season of Easter. It all starts with truth in the roots of the tree. We're based in God's truth. We grow in discipleship as we learn what it means to follow Jesus. We grow where we are planted here in Elmhurst, Illinois. Those branches of godly relationships and compassionate care lead us to love and care for one another. And then the fruit of that, the stories that we get to tell of God's goodness to us and to every generation. And we focus on that next generation so that this beautiful gift can be passed on to those who come after us. I truly believe these visionary values will lead us into the future. And I'm doing a lot of contemplating about what that could look like. Right now, given so many things that are happening in our world, so many insecurities, I find myself drawn toward prayer. I think it's a very important thing for us to learn what it means to pray, to pray together, to gather together in prayer, to lift up our, our city and our, and our nation, to lift up before God each other and our concerns and our hurts to truly appeal to God for the sake of this world, that they might know Jesus. I'm, I'm drawn toward prayer. When I think about discipleship, I'm also drawn to something I'm calling zero-entry discipleship. We need to be ready for people to come into our midst who have zero understanding of Jesus or the gospel. And these people, these people may be 50, 60, 70 years old and have never really delved into what it means to be a follower of Jesus. We need to be ready for anyone to start their discipleship journey at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. We're looking at how to do that. 
We are planted here in Elmhurst, and we really need to know what is our role in this community. I wonder if it isn't to be an encouragement, to be an encouragement to people. There are so many people with so many struggles and so many pressures. What would it look like for a manual to be an encouragement? You can encourage just about anybody, right? And we should, because God calls for us to be a blessing to our city. And you know what? I just feel like God is going to bless so many people through our congregation. And yes, the times are tough. The, the winds of social change are against us. In so many ways, there are pressures economically, internationally, that could affect our congregation. But God got us through COVID, and God will continue to strengthen our congregation in the years to come. I am confident of that. He wants us to be a light, to shine into the darkness. I believe that we can and that we will be that light, reflecting the light of Christ to a darkened world and drawing people into the light where they can find hope where they can find security, where they can find eternal life through Jesus in his death and resurrection. It is our mission. It is our calling to be connected to Christ, to care for community. Well, Heather, thank you so much for sharing all of the awesome things that are happening at the school. I am so excited for next year. I am too. It's so great to be part of this place and know that we're making a difference in the lives of children, that they have a safe school to come to where they're hearing the truth. They're not hearing what the world wants them to hear. They're hearing what God wants us to know and what lives in our hearts every day. Yeah, and that sets us apart. We really are different than the rest of the world. We're shining God's light into the darkness. And we play that role in our community. It's an important role. So many people need what we have been given. Mm -hmm. But you know what also is really important is every single part of person in this community playing their part and playing their role. And that, that comes to you too. God has given you a role to play in our community. And it is so important that you play that part as well, regardless of what it is. Maybe you participate in some sort of way in the church. Maybe you're shining your light in your workplace or at home or at your school. And you could get involved in our school. Yeah, maybe you want to come and read with kids next year or help teachers with something. I always have ideas. <laughs> I'm sure of that. <laughs> well, this is such an awesome thing that we get to do together, but we have to do it together. And I just want to thank you. We would not be where we are as a church and a school if it weren't for you and for the commitment that you have to the gospel proclamation of church and school in Elmhurst, Illinois. I'm excited for the year to come. I'm excited for what God is doing and for the many, many lives that get to be touched every single day. And you know what I'm also excited for? I get to go on a mission trip to Africa. So I'm confident you're going to have a great time at the voters meeting without me. But, Pastor, mm -hmm. I kind of am liking this hat now. So... What? Yeah, I, I mean, what? I, it Heather, looks good. Heather, I, I can't go to Africa without the hat. So you want to go to the voters meeting? 